They laughed at him. Neighbors said he was digging holes like a badger. Others joked that he'd lost his mind, carving a crooked tunnel into the hill behind his dugout cabin. But he kept working, quietly, patiently. He hauled stones, packed clay, and built a wooden frame inside that strange little passage and what looked like a pointless hole in the hillside would soon do something his critics said was impossible, keep a dirt-walled home almost 50 degrees warmer. This is the forgotten technology of the hillside vent, without burning extra fuel, a frontier adaptation of ancient airflow engineering that appears in 19th century Great Plains dugouts, Siberian zemliankas, medieval European earth shelters, and even Inuit snowhouse ventilation systems. Across continents and centuries, people who lived close to the ground learned a counterintuitive truth. Earth, when used correctly, is one of the most efficient insulators on the planet. To understand why, we start with a setting. It was the winter of 1886, one of the coldest winters in recorded American frontier history. Temperatures across the Dakota Territory dropped to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Ranchers lost tens of thousands of cattle. Homesteaders who lived in poorly built shacks froze, struggled to cook, and spent each night burning precious buffalo chips or scant firewood simply to survive. But in a remote valley, a lone homesteader named Thomas Jenks had a different idea. Instead of building upward, he built into the land. He carved a dugout into a south-facing hillside, reinforced it with cedar posts, and sealed the walls with thick layers of packed clay. This wasn't unusual. Many settlers lived in dugouts during their first years. What was unusual was what he did behind the dugout. He cut a narrow rising vent tunnel through the hill. Neighbors told him you're letting the cold in, you're wasting heat, you're making a chimney in the wrong direction. But Jenks wasn't crazy. He'd learned the idea from two sources a Swedish immigrant who described similar vents used in earthen barns back home, and an old Army Corps engineer who once explained the stack effect that moved air in underground bunkers. Jenks' vent had three parts. First, a low intake opening hidden near the base of the hill. Second, a long rising channel carved through packed soil. And third, a stone-framed opening near the ceiling inside his dugout. His goal wasn't to bring in air quickly, it was to bring in air slowly, warmed naturally by the earth. What he built was a primitive geothermal air exchanger. Winter arrived. The valley plunged into lethal cold. And something astonishing happened. While nearby cabins froze so hard that iron stovepipes frosted over, Jenks' dugout held steady. The inside temperature remained between 45 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit, even when the outside air was minus 30 or minus 40. When he lit even a small fire, the dugout became genuinely comfortable. The strange vent in the hill worked, and over the next decades, variations of this system appeared in homestead manuals, agricultural barns, Siberian earth huts, and even early 20th century soil houses in Eastern Europe. But the origins go back much further than that. To understand how the system worked, and why it was far ahead of its time, we need to reveal the science and the global history behind the hillside vent. To modernize, the hillside vent looks primitive, but the physics behind it is elegantly simple and astonishingly effective. It combines three principles used across ancient medieval and frontier civilizations, thermal mass stack effect, and ground temperature moderation. The first principle is thermal mass. Packed earth absorbs and stores heat, slowly releasing it over time. Even in winter, a hillside maintains a stable internal temperature, typically between 45 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit in many climates. This is why root cellars rarely freeze. By placing a vent tunnel inside that stable soil zone, the freezing winter air entering the channel warms by the time it reaches the interior. Ancient Persians used this idea in cannot cooling tunnels. Medieval Europeans used it in earth cellars. Siberian villagers used it in Zemliankas, partially buried homes that stay warm even in 60 degrees Fahrenheit conditions. Second is the stack effect. Warm air rises, cold air sinks, a dugout naturally traps heat because it sits below ground level. But without ventilation, moisture builds up, creating mold and dangerous carbon monoxide levels from wood-burning stoves. The hillside vent solves this by creating a gentle upward airflow that replaces stale air without dumping, freezing drafts directly into the living area. Third is the shape of the vent. Jenks built his tunnel narrow, long and slightly sloped. This slowed the airflow, which is crucial. A short, wide pipe would have sucked in freezing wind, but a long buried channel forces the incoming air to contact the earth, equalizing temperature before entering the dugout. It is essentially a low-tech version of a ground source heat pump. Centuries before electricity, historical parallels appear across the world. Mongolian pit dwellings used stone-lined ducts to pre-warm winter air. Nordic sod houses often carved small ventilation shafts at angles into the hill. In the Carpathian Mountains, shepherd huts used underground vents to keep smoke out and warm air inside. Indigenous Arctic builders designed snowhouse vents that used pressure differentials to keep cold drafts from blowing inside. In every case, people discovered the same principle. The earth isn't cold, it is stable, and stability is the key to survival. The hillside vent also solved another major problem, fuel scarcity. On the Great Plains, firewood was rare. 
Homesteaders burned twists of dried grass, buffalo chips, corn cobs, or whatever they could scavenge. Heating an above-ground shack consumed immense fuel. Heating a dugout that barely lost any heat consumed almost none. By reducing cold infiltration, Jenks Hillside Vent cut fuel consumption by as much as 70%. This wasn't just comfort. It was survival. When scientists studied underground homes in the 1970s energy crisis, they discovered that a well-designed earth shelter needs only a fraction of the heat required for conventional construction. In other words, Jenks' odd little vent was not only effective, it was scientifically sound and ahead of its time by nearly a century. But the true legacy of the hillside vent comes from what happened after that brutal winter. The neighbors who mocked him now wanted to see inside, and what they saw changed how frontier families built their homes. By February, the Dakota Plains were devastated. Livestock froze into the snow, railroad lines stalled, people abandoned homesteads, but smoke quietly rose from the chimney of Jenks' dugout every morning, and his family remained warm enough to sleep, cook, and even work at a small table without numb fingers. Word spread. Neighbors who once mocked him began making the trip to see his crazy vent, and when they stepped inside, they were stunned. The dugout was warm. Not hot, not perfect, but livable. A heavy wool coat was enough to stay comfortable. The walls didn't drip with condensation. The fire burned cleanly. No frost crept across the floor. People began asking questions. How did it work? Why wasn't the cold pouring in? Where was the draft? Jenks explained the same idea. Frontier engineers later recorded. The earth was doing the heating. The vent regulated airflow. The hill acted like a giant natural furnace buffer. That spring, something remarkable happened. Three neighboring families rebuilt their dugouts and added hillside vents of their own. Some made them from stone, others from sawed bricks, and some simply carved new channels through clay and reinforced them with willow branches. And by the winter of 1887, almost every one of those dugouts outperformed wooden cabins in heat retention. This pattern repeated across frontier communities. Early settlers in Nebraska and Kansas began adding angled vents to sod houses. Miners in Colorado used uphill shafts to regulate airflow in winter camps. Archaeologists later found similar designs in prehistoric pit houses across the American Southwest, where angled vents funneled controlled air into ceremonial keep as the simple, strange, mocked idea became a regional norm. Eventually, as homesteaders prospered and built wooden homes, the hillside vent faded from memory, but the principle survived, reappearing in energy-efficient housing movements, off-grid construction, and modern passive earth homes. Today, engineers studying extreme weather shelters still cite the frontier hillside vent as an early example of passive geothermal ventilation, and modern preppers quietly revive the idea in earth-sheltered cabins and stormproof shelters. The lesson from Jenks' hillside dugout is timeless. Nature provides stability. Humans simply have to understand how to use it. A dugout warmed by earth, a vent warmed by soil, a home kept livable by a method people once laughed at. Everyone mocked his hillside vent, until the day it kept his family 50 degrees warmer than the deadly world outside.